Before World War II, the Soviet Army was one of the largest tank forces in the world. The Soviet Army not only perfected tank design and construction technology, but also actively explored armored warfare tactics. In the mid-1930s, the Soviet Union began to engage in various engineering vehicles, and the T-26 and BT fast tanks were modified into bridge-laying tanks. However, these modifications were not very successful. Later, designers developed the TM-34 bridge-laying tank based on the more reliable T-34 medium tank. The TM-34 was proposed in 1942, partly due to the late standardization of the T-34 medium tank and partly due to the combat demands of the Great Patriotic War. Designers believed that the bridge-laying tank should be based on the T-3476 tank chassis and that it could help tanks and vehicles traverse certain special terrains when on the move. The first prototype appeared at the end of 1942. The basic structure of the vehicle remained unchanged, retaining the original power, suspension, and armor protection. The machine gun on the front right of the vehicle was retained as self-defense firepower for the bridge-laying tank. The crew was expected to consist of three people, including the driver in the front left, the commander in the front right, and another equipment operator possibly located in the original turret ring position. This bridge-laying tank, which highly utilized existing equipment, did not burden the factory with heavy production demands, and the logistical support of the chassis could also be unified, theoretically benefiting the military. The bridge-laying equipment used by the tank was relatively primitive and simple. There were more than one detailed structures seen in the photos, but they all had a similar working method, which relied on the bridge-laying tank sacrificing itself to fill in the trenches and then allowing friendly forces to pass over its top bridge structure. This operating mode was similar to a variant of the British Churchill Infantry Tank during World War II, but better in certain details. The TM-34 had a fixed sloping track at the rear of the vehicle, and the top bridge track was hinged to the rear engine compartment of the vehicle. The front of the bridge track was connected to the front of the vehicle via hydraulic equipment, and the crew could operate the equipment to lift one end of the bridge track within a certain range. Before use, it was necessary to determine the width and depth of the trench suitable for the bridge-laying tank, as its bridge track did not fold out but was a fixed length, with a length similar to that of the vehicle, approximately 6 to 6.5 meters. When in use, the tank would directly enter the trench or other bridge-laying area and be secured. If the height was not enough, the front end of the bridge could be raised by the hydraulic equipment, allowing friendly tanks to pass through the rear fixed track of the bridge-laying tank. The advantages of the TM-34 were its simple structure, reliable operation, and ease of production. It was said that it could help tanks overcome trenches with a width of up to 12 meters and a depth of 2.2 to 4.5 meters. Derived from the sturdy and reliable body of the T-34 medium tank, the bridge could allow all conventional tanks and self-propelled artillery used by the Soviet Army during World War II to pass through. People might wonder how a bridge track of less than 7 meters in length, even when combined with the rear section, could not completely fill a 12-meter wide trench. However, it should be remembered that tanks themselves had certain trench-crossing capabilities, so as long as there was a strong supporting point, they could pass through. However, due to the war, the TM-34 bridge-laying tank did not receive further development, and there were not enough resources to mass-produce it. The prototype tank was also not preserved. Its related technological exploration laid the foundation for the development of bridge-laying tanks in the post-war Soviet Union.